Hey folks, it's Artwolf. Welcome. We have a bit of an unusual thing for you here this week. Uh, this is brand new as of when I am filming, although it's going to be a little bit before it makes its way to the front of the queue for actual video release. This is World at War magazine issue number 80. And this has been just released. I was literally monitoring the S&T website day after day to, uh, to see when this would become available for ordering because I am not subscribed. Um, but I did want this particular one and we will look at, take a look at the game as well. I have already separated everything. So that's why this is not an unboxing video. Um, but the, the topic, the, the, the headline topic of the issue and the subject of the game is Hanout, Tank Action France 1940. Now the, the astute or the Belgian will no doubt point out that Hanout is, which I am probably mispronouncing, but I am willing to accept that, um, is in fact in Belgium and not in France. Nevertheless, it is a campaign that occurs in France in uh, May 12th through the 14th, I believe, in 1940. And it's actually the largest tank battle of the campaign. And we'll take a look at the order of battle in, by way of the counters in a little bit, but we might as well buzz through the magazine as well. Um, I don't buy that many of these. This is, of course, published by Strategy and Tactics Press, which is a part of or owned by or had a relationship with Decision Games. So it is a, you know, for all intents and purposes, a Decision Games product. So let's take a look. Uh, we've got some ads for miscellaneous Decision Games products, including Strategy and Tactics Quarterly. Whatever uh, you think of the games that have been included in s and over the years, and, and its sister magazines, um, the magazine has generally been very good. So now we have the, the big feature article, Hanout, uh, Tank Action 1940. This is by Joe Miranda, and it's quite long, and it's got a whole bunch of um, fairly interesting maps. And here's an uh, organization chart um, and information on tanks and tank guns. Here's the battle itself. Here's the subscription cards. This runs uh, 39 or 40 dollars, I believe. It ordered directly from Decision. Um, and it arrived very quickly. The, the The website told me four to six weeks. It took less than one week. So if you if you see that on their page. Now one of the reasons, and we'll talk about this when we get to looking at the game, but one of the reasons why I'm interested in this particular game is that it uses a streamlined version of the GOSS or Grand Operational Simulation Series rules, of which there are four existing games, all of which are large or very large boxed games. Um, so we're still in the uh, Hanut article here and then we have the design corner um, now they I will point out for those uh, who want them electronically the rules are available for download for this game on decision games website but the vassal module is not yet available so and here you can order the magazine or the game without the magazine I guess uh, here's US liaison aircraft in World War II by Aaron Bloomberg this is something I don't know very much about so uh, compare and contrast U.S. and Japanese submarine operations off of Iwo Jima and Okinawa by Jim Bloom. That's interesting. Uh, Japanese sub-doctrine was, of course, very different from U.S. sub-doctrine. Um, in fact, U.S. sub-doctrine was very similar to German sub-doctrine. Midway Solitaire. Don't know much about that. Franco-Italian Alpine Campaign of 1940 by J.E. and H.W. Kaufman. This is interesting. I see the French still had very fine hats at the time of this campaign. And nice, nice looking maps. The, the maps are very nice in here. I don't know who does the maps for s and in World at War and Modern War Magazine, uh, but these are very nice. And some ads, back issues available. Uh, incidentally, if you're watching this video close to release, um, which is September 2021, um, Decision is running one of their periodic specials on s and Modern War, and World at War back issues where you can get a decent discount on them. So check that out if you're so inclined. Hitler and Stalingrad by John T. Burt. Got another ad for Battle for Germany. Tra Chinese Navy at War, 37 to 41. This would be interesting to read. As somebody that's very interested in that campaign and yet finds it very difficult to find material on that campaign, British Somaliland, 1940. Very nice. Merrill's Marauders. It's one of the folio games. Corrupt Bargain, which I think is still coming. Uh, book Review. 
cross Suez, mega feedback results. We're not going to go through any of this. Uh, this centrifugal offensive might be actually uh, fairly interesting. That possibly in this forgotten Pacific battles, World at War seventy one. So these are older issues. There's a number of issues in this Pacific battles series. Anyway, that's the magazine. China, the next war in S and quarterly, I guess is is next. But uh, but we're today looking at World at War magazine. So I have already because because the rules are kind of glued into the magazine. I was not going to try and do that on camera um, and potentially wreck it. So. Uh, game design here by Joe Yoast, uh, map graphics by Joe Yoast, and counters by Joe Yoast. So we have here a 16-page booklet, and as far as I can tell, the one online is the same so far, but I haven't really looked at the one on the, the online version yet. It is a 16-page rule book. So for those of us who are f at least somewhat familiar with other versions of the Goss rules, you might say, wow, <laughs> they've really stream streamlined this. Um, and I haven't really had the chance to analyze to, to what extent that's true, um, but as soon as I can make the space work here in my filming area, um, I would love to do videos on this. It'd be easier to do it with the Vassal module, but that's not available yet. Um, so, I mean, just the stacking rules. The stacking rules are like a page and a half in regular Goss, and here they're one column, so that's, you know, that's a, a significant, um, a significant difference right there. Now, all the stuff about supply and artillery, uh, even artillery and stuff like that is, is pretty streamlined. Um, and the other thing is that they give you the extra counters that you would need to play this with the full Goss rules. Let me, um, let me bust out the map. It is a standard sized war game map. And it's got, there is no player aid card. Instead, all of the necessary tables are on the map. And it is, I'll try and frame it so you can kind of see it. And then off here we have some tables and stuff. So you may notice, I don't know if you can tell, but the hexes are oversized. The, these are almost double sized hexes. So on a, like a regular Goss map, this would be like maybe fit in this type of area. Um, so it's, it's relatively small. And what we have are a couple of divisions going at one another here. There is one counter sheet. Now I haven't purchased a, a Decision Games magazine in a while. Um, one thing I don't see is errata counters for other games. This is all Goss stuff. Uh, all Goss things, we have some, looks like we have, so we have, um, I don't know what the French unit designations are. We have what looks like the German 18th Infantry Division, 20th Motorized, 3rd Panzer, 4th Panzer, um, and then maybe a couple of miscellaneous units, um, and then for the French... We've got DM. I'm not sure what DM means. That's what I mean when I don't know about the, the French unit designations. And then we have some units that I take to... I mean, they're all infantry, though. Yeah, they look like... Uh, it's, I would take it as a mountain division, but none of them are mountain units, and I don't even know how you would simulate that in Goss. Um, so, obviously, we have French, we have Germans, uh, we have some Luftwaffe, which will be a little bit hard to tell apart from the French. Uh, we have these... Um, these spade markers, which are used for a variety of things in Goss, we would end up using them in this to represent um, additional step losses. So it's a step-based system. So you've got this uh, battalion right here, and the larger units are battalions. So what we would have here is if you take a hit to this unit, it has three steps, and I can tell because it has three little dots. Um, we would flip it over, and then if it takes another hit after that, we would put a spade marker, I think, on t uh, under it or on top of it, and then its combat values would be halved on top of that. I, I believe that's how it works. It's been a year or two. Um, we do have some French improved positions here. The French can dig in, the Germans cannot. Um, we have fatigue, that's, so that's a factor. Uh, we do have artillery, although this does not use the full Goss artillery rules. They tell you right up front in the book, don't use these artillery units. Use the abstracted support points as well. And we do have a couple of general record tracks, one for the French, one for the Germans. Shouldn't be that much to keep track of. Um, you are keeping track of replacements as well. So, um, and they don't give you markers for that, so you got to figure it out on your own. Now, there are 15 turns in the game. The way that works in Goss is that you have a game day, and each game day has three turns, an AM turn, a PM turn, and a night turn. And again, we will see... Uh, to what extent this replicates 
the essential features of Goss. What what I feel are the essential features of Goss is the way the movement works. The 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 the, the movement works. I don't want to give you specifics because I haven't read this again, and I don't want to misstate anything because it's a complicated game, and and, and I don't want to look dumb. So, um, <clears throat> but the way the movement works, where you you move everything in specific phases, and you can't just move through your own units necessarily. You have to do something with them, um, including stop. Uh, so you have to really organize your movement to make sure that it works. This is why a campaign like Market Garden, which is actually the next big Goss game in development, will work very naturally with the system. A lot of the mechanisms that other game systems need special rules for are already built into Goss. Um, so, um, again, 16 pages, full color. Uh, I wouldn't say a lavish use of color. It looks like they're highlighting... Um, important rules in red and then examples in blue which is a perfectly good uh, model to use uh, but it does look like a really significantly stripped down version of Goss so uh, but as I mentioned you can just play this with the regular Goss rules if you want all the extra pieces that you would need are here um, I will also point out that this is the thicker brown core stock that Decision has been using lately, including in Lucky Forward. So uh, it's on the, and I've, I've been super careful with the counter sheet because they're 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 very easily to uh, pop out of this sheet. Now there's dummies of some kind here too. I wonder what that means. So a, a lot of things going on in this system, and I think it gives you a, a lot of interesting things to think about that maybe less complicated systems don't. Um, that's one of the reasons why I find this system very attractive. It is a difficult system to approach, um, but big strides have been made in the last year or so. First of all, with the release of Lucky Forward, which has a newly revised rulebook, which is quite a lot better than the previous rulebook, uh, which in turn was quite a lot better than the rulebook before that. Um, and then now with the release of Hanout France 1940 in the latest... World at War magazine. So if you're interested in Goss, you want to try it out without dropping $140 plus on a giant boxed game. Uh, here's here's your uh, here's your route to do that. Uh, World at War magazine number 80. Um, no, because someone will probably ask. Um, no one from Decision Games has been in touch with me about this. I bought this myself. They did not count me a copy or anything like that. Um, this is just a system that I am particularly enamored with and would like to play more of and hopefully in the future we'll be able to bring you more content on. So I would like to thank you for watching. If you have found this informative or useful, please do give it a thumbs up. Please do subscribe to the channel. Please consider supporting Ardwolf's Lair using the links in the video description. There is a Patreon, there is a Ko-Fi, and there is a merch store where all kinds of fancy merchandise, including nice t-shirts and coffee mugs, can be purchased. Once again, thanks for watching, and until next time, happy wargaming.